Very long delay to actually kick off the program. Technical problems right here, but of course we've been trying to sort that out, switching over from one item to another. Because of course getting to be able to get all the items ready. Of course, this is in focus. Better late than never. Thank you for making time, despite all that delay on the program. My name is Eugene Anangwe. Let's quickly take a look at what we'll be talking about tonight. We're talking about the issue of DRC and of course uh, there's so many tweets that have been coming through which will be coming to them. The world has been divided between powers for their interest, not ours. See now Venezuela, DRC and uh, Crimea, no freedom of choice and we call it democracy. You have to choose as per the established uh, plan. That is democracy and of course otherwise you are out and they bring democracy for you. We'll talk about all these particular issues why is the stability of Congo important for Rwanda and the region because of course the international community has been voicing their concerns on uh, the DRC election which way forward is this meddling or genuine concern we'll talk a bit about that and of course also the role of the religious bodies the Catholic Church right there has been vocal and stands their ground on the vote and they say the announced winner is not the rightful one and the vote needs to be uh, recounted. Of course, we'll be bringing our panelists right here in the program. We have uh, none other than Roger Munyamenda, who's actually an analyst and also a consultant. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. And of course, we expect to have Gatete, who just last minute told us that he will not be able to join us on the program for reasons better known to him. And of course, we wish him well wherever he is. Thank you so much. Also, we have uh, on uh, phone, we we have none other than Mike Itongwa who will be joining us on the line from Goma and of course we also have Derek Tumusime who is uh, from the Center for Electoral Justice and Research is joining us via Skype. If we have them, technical team, let's put them up so that we can be able to start uh, our conversation with them. Let's start with you here, uh, Roger. Uh, you've been following the Congo for quite some time and of course you've also tried to analyze this uh, in your own way. Talk to us a bit about uh, the current state of affairs, the writing for some people it seemed to have already been on the wall and so what is happening today what is manifesting itself today some people say this is something that we expected do you think is something that should, should surprise us or it is uh, quite something that uh, is just out of the ordinary well thank you really to to give me the opportunity to to say uh, what i have been reading and following mm -hmm. I put up some prediction in my blog a few weeks ago, mm. and some of the prediction happened. Um, the media is still focusing on much on the presidential election outcome, mm. but things has happened since the uh, provisional results, notably the uh, parliamentary elections mm. result, mm. that has been uh, showing that the uh, coalition of the president Kabila has won yeah. a majority. Yeah. Uh, well beyond the expectation, yeah. uh, that majority will allow two things, the major things that everybody uh, will uh, understand. Yeah. Two, they will be able to nominate a prime minister from their ranks. Yeah. Two, the majority is so large that they can even um, change some provision of the constitution, yeah. which is a major fact today. Right. So. Kabila camp has been um, <clears throat> planning that uh, uh, win for months, and uh, there was very good surprise at the end, the last line of the last mile, showing that the opposition is coming up, mm -hmm. and the surprise came up with the, um, the, the win from one of the opposition leader, mm. Felix Chisiket. Mm. Uh, in that sense, um, it's a really, really new change. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shift yeah. in the local politics in the years. It's a shift, and of course, a shift in a sense that we want to hear from uh, one of uh, the Congolese citizens who's actually in Goma, Mikey Tongwa, who's live with us on the phone from Goma. Mike, if you can hear me. First of all, you know, the 30th uh, poll was actually seen or expected as to be something. I think we've just lost him right there. We'll be able to call him back. In the meantime, Derek Tumusime is joining us from uh, Kampala, Center for Electoral Justice and Research. Derek, if you can hear me, uh, we are hearing from our first speaker here in studio that, of course, uh, there's a change. There's a shift in DRC. One of the shifts many people are seeing here is for the first time, the opposition wins against, uh, you know, the ruling party. But... 
opposition members go and contest i will say that they're contesting that particular uh, uh vote talk to me about how you're reading the events in drc congo from where you sit well my reading of the it's from congo mm -hmm. uh short two things one we are seeing is a possible uh, transfer of power which has got had over before in this with congo mm -hmm. uh, and secondly uh, that when you look at the statement from Sadaf that can signed by by a it shows that uh, that it is high time that uh, the Congolese galvanize themselves find a solution mm -hmm. to the problems that are about through a peaceful means, right. the rule of law, and the, if need be, we should get the outcome of the revolution. So two things come out that we think. Right. Derek, another thing that is very also uh, significant here is uh, we are already seeing voices from the international community. France, for example, was the first to actually come out to strongly, uh, you know, sh throw some shade on this uh, announced winner, Chisekedi. Of course, we've seen also Belgium saying that, uh, you know, the, 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 the results are suspicious. The Catholic Church is also out there. Uh, tell us about the role of the international community, specifically in this. Some people see it as meddling in African affairs, while others say, yes, indeed, these are concerns which are genuine. They hold water. What is your take? Well, uh, as I, as I this, this afternoon, that uh, Congo is always a hot cake. Remember, uh, Congo is home to two thirds mm -hmm. of which is a big industry globally. And Western uh, powers have, have economic interests uh, that were should. It's, however, for all its and purposes, Congo, like any other part of the international. When you read the preamble of the constitution, uh, you see them affirming uh, to a number of national institutions, uh, like the University of a number of UN convictions, the African Charter of People's Rights. All these, therefore, is international community to scrutinize the process. Mm. So, in a way, it is being that it's a member of the national community, yeah. there is no way. Events can go on without Western powers. Right. Derek, we'll come back to you. Let's bring back uh, Roger here. In the meantime, I'm hoping that our technical team is trying to uh, bring back Mikey Tonga, who's uh, from Goma. If you get him back, kindly let me know. Of course, Roger, uh, same question to you. The international community, we've already heard uh, from France. We are now hearing from uh, ECOWAS, uh, not, not ECOWAS, SADEC. SADEC. SADEC, SADEC already saying that, uh, you know, they, the, the Congolese uh, vote was not, uh, you know, credible they want a recount and they're saying that it is important that power is actually shared so that uh, you know there is a win-win situation let me read your thoughts on this well well in terms of dipl diplomatically way uh, expression from SADC is is a really uh, challenge the, the the election legitimacy and and, and, and the credibility mm. Uh, mm. if they ask for a vote recount which is what uh, Fayulu Competitor, competitor is trying to, 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 by using the constitutional court and challenging the result at the constitutional court, it, it looks like they are close, uh, um, the position are very close. Mm. And um, this is a major development because uh, we were thinking that in the region, everybody was quiet, there was minimal collateral damage, mm -hmm. there was no influx of refugees somewhere, yeah. and then all of the sudden, uh, uh, SADC take that position. Yeah. That means something is happening. And as I always said, since the beginning, mm -hmm. this game is, is still on. We don't know exactly what's going to happen yeah. very, uh, until the end, right. until the, the trophy is awarded. Right. And two, as I'm trying to develop before, yeah. I was trying to say that the, this change is, is, is a shift from the winner takes all. Everybody get a piece of, of, of it. Mm -hmm. Even if you look on a coalition, was second position for the election of the parliament. Mm -hmm. So that make him, if they won't choose him, the opposition leader. 
for the next parliament. But he wanted the big, the big price. That's correct. Yes. Would so, he be able to shed down so, and, and, and take... So it's still an, oppos an, an, an option. option. An option is yeah. left yeah. if the, the constitutional court uh, does uh, uh, reject his claim. Mm -hmm. Or uh, ultimately, there is another option that is still on. Mm -hmm. They can cancel out the election right. and postpone it. This and is, postpone it again. Uh, postpone it again. Right. So this is all those things happening in the... The, some people calling it mathematics in Congo politics. Yeah. It's very complex, and the people don't need not to rush for the conclusion for the moment. Right. What thinks that is for sure today is that one camp has managed to control the parliament and the Senate. Mm. And the next president, whoever comes from Fayulu or Chisekedi Felix, mm. will be in a position of cohabitation mm. with the, the majority. Right which is unprecedented in the Congo politics. Very, very, very interesting times indeed. Let's bring back Derek here, of course. Uh, and in the meantime, technology team, kindly help us get Harris uh, on, the, on, on Skype as well. He's been waiting, and also, of course, he says that he's available for us uh, to speak to us, to shed some light. Uh, Harris Grant, please let us have him also on Skype. Derek, in the meantime, uh, we have had uh, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves uh, Ledran saying that uh, the official Congolese election results declaring Felix Chizekedi victory in the presidential elections do not tally with results on the ground. Key word here is do not tally with results on the ground. This is a French diplomat saying they do not tally with results on the ground. The person or the institution that has actually issued the results that are uh, of this election is the electoral body right there. It, it beats logic for some people who say that uh, so even diplomats have the electoral bodies, uh, so who do we trust? Who has the mandate uh, to actually announce the official results? Who has the mandate to give what is actually legitimate here? Talk to us about this in your analysis. Well, well uh, you see, my, my argument here is that uh, why are we having all this? The background to this is that this election should have happened, but it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the president English power, and therefore we went, in, we went into this situation without mm -hmm. election. This mm -hmm. question of me is where, where institutions that manage elections are not trusted by the public, mm -hmm. the Congolese people, and it therefore brings all. And that's why it's the Catholic Church is now one of the most second to the army in the court. That what is said. Is actually respected by them. I, I am reliably informed that it deployed over 40,000 mm. and therefore those observers were at, at all positions mm. and therefore watched the counting went on up and up and And it is the same Catholic fact that informed uh, that uh, Martin Fayette. But, but let's wait for the constitution which gives us an opportunity. The constitutional court just the evidence uh, that Martin Payuna is team. Mm, mm, mm. I'm sure if the evidence is uh, is uh, found to be viable, the election to be overturned, to see a re-election or, or a recount at least being announced. By the right. Um, I think what you're saying is that this uh, countries or this, uh, uh, you know, international bodies usually also have their observers on the ground. And so probably this is where the basis of uh, the, the French foreign minister comes in. But the same question uh, as well for you, because one of the things that most people will usually say is that when or what is that line? between meddling and actually actual real concerns because uh, some people are saying everybody is interested in what is actually going on in Congo because of the vast minerals that are there and so it brings to the attention of the big uh, you know leagues the US sent uh, you know troops just near the border in anticipation of anything uh, you know happening after this vote uh, France as well you're seeing what they're saying and the, and the colon co co colonial uh, powers there how do we draw that line between meddling getting into our, our affairs and actually real concerns of what is actually going on on the ground. Of course, uh, such information of a troop uh, landing in Gabon or similar from Belgium in Brazzaville has led to a lot of conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. um, the most, uh, the concern I have in that regard is uh, 
the information from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Belgium asking his national to leave the country, mm. which is more alarming and sending a pressure or something that a real threat. Yeah. Uh, uh, other than that, all of the countries, the EU has said that they agree with the, the, uh, the, the, the process and they want to have the process until the end. Mm. So every power and everybody has his own opinion. Mm -hmm. They usually put it in the diplomatic, term, diplomatic terms. However, we, we need to understand what is uh, at a stake, yeah. uh, what, 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 they, what the message they are projecting. They used to have, like, uh, um, they need to have a stamp of credibility yeah. for the major Western power yeah. uh, to have a good election, yeah. uh, which is, in this case, the country has organized the election by himself. Yeah. So they have escaped the, the thing. They didn't even use the MONUSCO on the ground, mm -hmm. which is a sideline MONUSCO. So uh, something is cooking. So, uh, they, at the end of the day, to say that the election was not credible, it, it, it just conf it's just to confirm that the local organizers were not able to do it. Right. So we don't know exactly what message they are sending. And it's not important. What is more important is what the Congolese people will decide and create at the end of the process how they manage the, contra the, the, the contradiction. Mm. Uh, th this constitution is today tested by the event, by the reality on the ground. Mm. The, 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 the but but what, what would the people do? What, what, what are they able to even do? Because we saw in, yes. in, in, in the United States of America, yes. after President Donald Trump was elected, there were so many protests. And yes. people expected that it would actually shake the center of power of, of, of Donald Trump's administration. But today he's still in office. The, today, they, they, we have not reached that stage yet. Mm -hmm. There is a legal challenge at the Constitutional Court. Yeah. We don't know what will be the decision, but we can just speculate, mm -hmm. but uh, create some scenarios and uh, do whatever, what, what, what the media international is doing. But today, we don't, not, not, we don't know yet yeah. what, who will get the trophy right. how, and what form. Yeah. And, uh, but what is more important is, at the end of the day, the Congolese people should and will decide what they want to do mm. uh, what, with the situation. If they handle it well, and that's why the SADC uh, proposal to have a, a, a transitional government of the unity, out of the scheme of the constitutional provision today, mm. which gives the, 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 the governor, governor responsibility to the majority, so they are saying share the power do something about it. Along the line, as, as you share the power, uh, work on fixing what is actually wrong. Exactly. All right. We're going to take a very short break right about now. All we want to do is just to see if we can be able to bring in Grant Harris, who's a former senior director for Africa in the White House. He's actually been waiting for us all along, and it's only fair that we try and be able to get uh, in touch with them. We're going to take this very short break, fix some of the things that we're able to do right here, and we'll be back uh, after this. You're working on it? All right, so I'm being told that the team uh, is actually working on that. Grant Harris will be joining us in a very short while. Derek Tumusime, let's bring you back on, on, on this particular um, uh, conversation. Electoral justice, because most of the time when electoral processes are happening, the citizens, the voters usually go out, some wake up very early in the morning to just, uh, you know, be on those long queues. And after that, after they've performed their civic duty, they want to go home and wait for their winner to be announced, their rightful winner. And that for them is justice. But when this is actually hijacked, and uh, most of them usually feel that electoral processes get hijacked along the way by those who rig these processes, talk to us a bit about the place of the citizens of Congo right now and others along uh, these lines of, uh, you know, seeking justice through the, the vote, and then it is stolen along the line. How do we fix this? It's been seen as a problem uh, around here, not just in Africa, but also in the Western countries. Yes, I agree with you. It's a question of... I agree with Congo is now in how we handle it as a rich political leadership of Congo matters so much in the security of, the, and, uh, of Congo itself. Because when Congo Corp, Uganda, Uganda has an platform. Likewise, Rwanda and others, including Tanzanians. Now, how do we fix this? Mm. Already there is a court process going. But the point is, is the court process being trusted? Remember Eugene, uh, two years ago, ago, the same court of court ruled that uh, should stay in power until it hands over, until it hands over. Yet, yet there was a provision under, under 
for seven days constitution that provided for circumstances under which where where that covered situation like where the Congolese and such power, presidential power be received to the president of the Congolese state. Mm. So if, 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 if the time that the constitutional court begins, the Congolese constitution court begins you know, uh, by, by finding a fair before court. An alternative like Sad, Sadak uh, suggests, we can adopt an alternative constitution mechanism where all parties in the government of unity. We have seen it work in South Africa, and we have seen it work in Kenya, and currently, you, you know that the Brian and Rodinga, it has worked extensively, that extensively well to, to the image of who is government. So it's the planet that today is fighting mm. all handedly and with us. Interesting. So, so that's what it is. Let's, right. give you, let's give the position of right. to redeem itself. And those aspects, we, we had alternative resolution mechanisms that were adopted elsewhere, like in South Africa. Right. What I hear from you, Derek, is that uh, it has worked in South Africa, the government of national unity, the handshake in Kenya, you refer to it and you feel this can also work in, in the DRC. Uh, but Rogers, I mean... Uh, <laughs> The people of Congo, uh, most mm. of them, uh, we saw the, after that announcement, there was some jubilation in parts of Congo. There are some jubilations in, in, in those, some in, in the diaspora. And, and for some people who were spoken to, some of them, they were just happy that uh, former President Kabila is no longer uh, in power. Mm -hmm. and for some, that, that was more important than anything else. Whoever comes on, it doesn't really matter. But as long as Kabila is off uh, the, the, the power, that was very important for them. But looking at the dynamics right now, mm -hmm. because if the Constitutional Court comes in and says that we will be looking into this, of course, the, 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 the trophy, as you were saying, will not be given out. We'll need to, 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 to have some time, like we've seen in Kenya, uh, before the swearing in actually uh, is actually done. And that means more time for President Kabila in office. Analyze this for us. Well, that's that's that will happen, uh, as as the electoral commission chairman said. Mm -hmm. It's either you accept the result, bluntly told the security council, yeah. you, we accept the result that we provided, yeah. or we cancel out the, the election. Yeah. Uh, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. If that scenario happened, which is among the scenario, mm. what will be the the end of the the, 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 the uh, at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. What will, can happen? Mm -hmm. Is it the end of the world? Mm -hmm. This constitution from the Congo has 13 years only old. Mm -hmm. In most of the country, they keep changing it like 15 years or three times per century, major change. So these things will happen, and the, 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 the devils are in the details. Mm -hmm. Even in the cohabitation, if they put uh, uh, Tshisekedi at, at the helm mm -hmm. with the majority of uh, uh, prime minister from the majority, mm -hmm. how are they going to share? Who? who there is unprecedented because nobody has planned the details on how the government will be doing. So they'll have to go for a referendum no, to they amend the constitution? They will have to have the talks. Yeah. They have to sit together and say to put out the details yeah. to sort out even the commutation, how it has happened. Mm -hmm. And that talks is exactly part of the things. Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting mm -hmm. such a thing to happen and the people burn the country, yeah. it's better than fixing it before, yeah. ahead. Yeah. And, and, and the people have argued and said that probably this is what uh, President Kabila really wanted uh, in the end, because he probably played his cards uh, to ensure that there's still some buying of time mm -hmm. still on that particular seat. Is this how you analyze that as well? Well, that is the end of the, the result is the, the, the time has been bought. Yeah. The church today, people are, are criticizing, has managed to uh, put an agreement at the last day of 2016 of the term of Kabila which allow them or the regime yeah. to keep on and prepare the election for yeah. two years. Yeah. So the role of the church, the civil society, is to mediate. They have done it. So it won't be surprised if some, somebody came uh, together today to also propose some mediation. Mm. Whatever the, 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 how do you call, uh, the, the ultimate objective of individual group or individual Kabila or the opposition, it is a half full, half glass uh, mm. situation, situation today. Yeah. 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 We don't know yet, yeah. uh, but there is the 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 the, 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 the takes win all 
is won't happen anymore. Right. This is one of the things. Right. In, in Congo politics, the people used to have like a like a, uh, analogy in the football. If you see a team winning uh, or hitting a goal, mm. they will whip the virtual adversary and say that we kill you. Yeah. Uh, so, if that's the thinking in the politics, then we we, we have a risk. We have a problem. Right? We have a problem. Right. People need to accept that they, they, they can share power. Yeah. There are some other options. So I'm not here to advocate to say that the the truth of the ballot was fine mm -hmm. or given the the process was okay. Yeah. I'm saying this is a stretch today. We need to deal with mm. that has an impact on the regional stability right. and, 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 and the neighbors. So we need to thread it very careful and to allow people to go into those uh, mediation avenues instead right. of like a confrontation, fight, fight confrontation, confronting, right. confronting each other. Yeah. Uh, Derek, while well, you're still with us, I mean, this whole issue of power sharing, we see that it seemingly is taking a precedent across Africa. And uh, for some people uh, in some political parties, some of them feel that it is unfair. We've seen, for example, in Kenya, uh, uh, when Raila Odinga did uh, lose the election, uh, that he claimed, of course, he said that he, they had actually won the election. It was stolen from them. And there was a power sharing agreement that actually took place uh, after some time. Those who were in the camp that had won felt that these people, they lost. Why are we rewarding people who have lost? Are we creating a president where people would be just stealing elections so that they still share power and still be in the realms of power in your analysis? Well, I, I, I don't think power sharing is, is a scapegoat for losers in an election. Mm -hmm. I think power sharing is in situations where uh, it, it's the only way out, where you have a volatile situation, the losing party who has accepted that have actually lost the election, mm. despite even the court process, may actually decide to take power and seek power. So it's not a. In fact, it brings the country together at an election. The an election divides the country. With a country like Congo, is so much tribalistic and with the international mm. of invested national power, it's important that the Congo people and we Africans outside support them to unite in having a peaceful transition mm. this time round. So I, I think it is not a way out with the, the losers. It is something that is really added in such a situation where the situation is volatile. A good example is, uh, is had Kofi Annan not brought, between, brought together, between, uh, the, together a conversation between Hilo Dinga and the I'm telling you Kenya that Kenya will not have uh, had a, a peaceful uh, post-election mm. uh, situation, especially after. So it is important that right. yes, like wrote just in the studio, that mediation is adopted in this because they only have one Congo. Right. It's the time where partner is to happen. Perfect. Uh, Derek and, of course, Rogers, we want to take a very short break, sip some water, and, of course, uh, fix some technical problems that we are having uh, here in getting the other panelists that we are supposed to have right on the program. Stay with us. We're back in a short while. Of course, in the magic drives to the Kumen Paki Samoa Zumogoroba.
ko dutega matwi kuri 1927 Magic FM ace kumwe na Jared ndetse na Michelle iradukunda Back, thank you so much for being with us right here on In Focus, and of course. Our sincere apologies to Grant Harris from wherever you're watching us uh, right now. And, of course, Mikey Tongwa. We were not able to carry you uh, live on this particular uh, broadcast. We'll endeavor to fix the technical issues that we've had so that we're able to have you on another uh, opportunity. But, of course, many thanks, Rogers Munyamenda, who's our analyst uh, today in the program and also a consultant, and Derek Tumusime, who's joining us uh, from the Center for Electoral Justice and research now uh, the the role of the of the church because most of the people seem to be saying that the the catholic church in congo is setting a very strong precedent in actually where the civil society and the religious bodies need to stand when it comes to electoral processes many times we've seen uh, the church going in bed with uh, the, 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 the ruling parties. Uh, we saw that even here in Rwanda during mm -hmm. the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis. Uh, in Kenya, the church has also been accused in many instances of actually being in bed with government, only standing up when it is too late, a little too late. But in Congo, we've seen the Catholics saying, no, the vote was not won by the person announced by Electoral Commission and because the numbers don't match what we have and we have a person who we believe actually won but they didn't go ahead to say who the winner is uh, let me hear your analysis first of all on this the choice of words here saying that the winner is not the one announced but still not going ahead to say who they believe actually did win how is this hurting the whole process well uh, the first thing is we need to 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 remind uh is that the Senko or the Catholic Church in the Congo has been always in the center of politics in the Congo. Mm. That's since Mobutu. It's not something new. Yeah. They've been there, they've been fighting with the Mobutu regime. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the major battles was the ban of Christian names by Mobutu mm. at that particular time. Mm. And uh, since then, the Catholic Church has been always in the politics. Uh, in the 80s, at the national conference, they even held the, uh, uh, the, the, the office chairmanship of the conference, national conference, yeah. and the parliament that came out from that uh, national conference. Mm. Since then, it's just like a, as a tradition now, they feel the responsibility to be part. They've mm. been empowered, mm. and they will keep it until... Right. And some people say that this is not a good thing. Is it it's a good not thing a good thing, thing, but if the, the country is not fixing its politics, mm. or people are getting poor, mm. or there is a tension, as a civil society everywhere, they, will t that, they take that role mm. because there's a vacuum. There's a vacuum. There's a vacuum. It's not... Now, I don't say that they, they don't have an agenda or they don't work with somebody, but if the, if the government is giving the pretext to the civil society to play the role of the things, or the political party are not playing it. Mm. Let, let's remind you that in the Congo that I keep telling people with 600 parties along the line of the tribal parties, mm. how, what, what, what else is remaining to do? Somebody has to be in the middle mm. to play that role right. because the other party yeah. are into uh, interests. Right. Uh, so, so in this case, interest. they're just filling the gap, Absolutely. that vacuum that is there. Uh, yes. Right. Now, what they do with it is yeah. different. It is different. It is something different. Right. And how or if there is in the church some individual uh, eminence or cardinals, bishop, with a different agenda, probably that's possible. Right. And so it could be even dangerous uh, or it could be a good thing. Absolutely. It, 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 that's how it is. Let's hear what uh, Derek Tumusima thinks about this. Uh, the role of the church, the role of religious bodies in actually filling vacuums, as uh, Roger is saying here. He says uh, the, the, the church in Congo is actually just filling a void that is actually missing uh, out there. What is your read on this particular uh, issue? Is it a good thing? Is this what most religious bodies in other African countries need to be doing right now? You know, Eugene, you have actually put it very right. 
Now, whether the virtue is there or not, it is true. But all Africa. I want to agree with Roger mm. that today there is absence of the state or the public numbers, the ordinary lives of citizens cannot be actually seen or appreciated by citizens. Because most people are elected in two positions of power. They take them as a position that it is a hand and they expect providing services to the people. Now the Catholic Church all over the world where it operates is providing education services, health services, access to best medicines among the poor. For instance in Congo, most of the most Express people in Congo are being uh, as the Catholic Church and Caritas. So, therefore, that virtue has enough, 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 enough for the church to take over. That is. Right. Uh, and again, the Catholic Church itself is uh, not due to politics, globally. Uh, as, as you know, uh, the Pope is a uh, head of state. Therefore, he, he play, they play a he played the role, he's having his religious role. But, uh, therefore, the Catholic Church is space, and therefore they are taking the, the political to work up. Right, they're taking their space on this. Uh, before we go, Rogers, I want to also ask you, uh, for Rwanda specifically, we understand Congo is, 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 is mostly, or in many cases, part of the equation whenever we're talking about Rwanda and its history. Historically, uh, we've seen and heard of the fact that most of uh, the FDLR have also been, you know, uh, 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 putting up base right there, right there in Congo. We've had Chisekedi himself in some uh, interviews with some media. Uh, pronouncing himself on this particular issue, saying um, that uh, the leadership of Congo from the past, from the days of Mobutu, uh, did fail Rwanda in actually not disarming the FDLR and other elements uh, and even, you know, making sure that they are uh, neutralized. He seems to be saying that they, they are ready, if, if he's finally given that particular trophy officially, they are ready to actually take this head on and work on some of these issues in, in ensuring good neighborliness with Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Is this a person that Rwanda needs, for instance? I know Rwanda is not, uh, as a country, going to vote in Congo, but as far as regional interest, geopolitics is concerned, is this a person that Rwanda feels that's a person that would want to be part of our allies here? I guess Rwanda will take uh, uh, will not take it at a personal level. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of principle. Right. Uh, if there is a, a stability there, and uh, there is, uh, and the person in charge, uh, uh, definitely there will be a discussion, a dialogue, probably, and the uh, uh, the goodwill being the bo both sides, definitely some something is positive will come out of it. Mm. If there is instability and uh, turmoils and influx of refugee and, uh, and some negative force take advantage of it, mm. then it's, it's a matter of concern for, for Rwanda. Mm. So th there is two levels of, 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 of uh, uh, analysis, they think. First of all, it's immediate needs. We need to, ca to take care of what is happening today. Mm. There will be a diplomatic relation, a good talks and a discussion with the relevant authority mm. that the people of Hong Kong have chosen by themselves. Mm. Wherever they will put, they will get the trophy. Mm. They, they, that discussion will continue at that impersonal level right. uh, without the necessary be choosing uh, the, 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 the person. Right. We are going to take the person that uh, come out from, mm. from the, 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 the process to, mm. uh, and they respect him. Mm. The second thing, Rwanda has an interest to have like a good relation because Congo to be in a good form because there is a trade dev development, mm -hmm. the business to engage. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if, if we look at what Rwanda wants to, to achieve, it's integration, uh, uh, CFTA, mm -hmm. uh, all those things, if there is a, a dark hole somewhere around us, it is very difficult to, to even to achieve mm -hmm. uh, the, the, those objectives that are very noble, that's the Pan-African ideas. We need to have a neighbor mm. that we can transact, we can deal with. Mm. And uh, lastly, um, every time there is a, a side losing in the battle of politics in the Congo, they come and blame the Rwanda always. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Sometimes even the winner. Mm. So we need to pay attention. It's a matter of concern. It's not something that we just leave, uh, uh, take it for granted or mm. leave it mm. uh, 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 as, as it is. Right. We need to engage people in, in the Rwanda as far as, as uh, I know is ready to engage whoever is, is bringing that peace and stability. Right. And lastly, the stability long term relies on how the governance will be enforced in the Congo. Mm. If with the bad governance and the human index is still declining, mm. the chance is that we just postpone the issue for the next election. Mm. So it's a, that's why I'm saying and keep saying that they need to be a talk to change the the political order and to fix the government issues. Mm. That will be the lasting solution. Mm. Otherwise, we are going to run in cycle. Every five years, mm. we run into trouble. Mm. Uh, and someone was saying on Twitter uh, over there that if we do not fix this ourselves, someone from outside exactly. will always come and want to and fix made, this for us. Made, made for it. Right. Uh, Derek, I, I want to uh, hear your last thoughts. Where do you see this ending? Your prediction? How do you see the situation in the DRC ending up in the next coming uh, weeks? Well, my prediction is that uh, I hope to see it being the, the President's election report being decided decisively and very recent this election because I'm sure Congo is not ready for another election. I think that will be the outcome of that decision. That's my prediction. Mm. Maybe if I am to add on what project that's a, that Congo, the problem of a political transition in Congo, so, uh, the neighboring also see that Congo also solves it, mm. especially as far as happening. External forces are hostile to uh, governments around the region. For example, the ADF question, uh, the killings, the other we pray that uh, all this is sort of this. R right, Derek. Uh, the so last words are not I mean, being heard quite clearly, so I'd, I'd have to cut it uh, uh, right there. I think we seem to be losing the connection uh, right there. Rogers, I want to come back to you. But uh, thank you so much, Derek, for being uh, part of the program. Thank you for uh, those particular uh, remarks. De uh, Derek to Musima Center for Electoral Justice and Research, joining us via Skype. Rogers, I want to give you the last uh, remarks, ra last thoughts uh, right here. Where do you see this ending in the next uh, few weeks to come? Well, uh, all the scenarios that we've, uh, we've been uh, reading might happen. But uh, um, usually, I also say that every time that people predict doom in the Congo, nothing happened. Mm. And the, 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 the volcano erupts when nobody is expecting it. Mm. I think the, the, that's what is going to happen is it's, it's probably controlled. People talk about backdoor deals, things like that which is part of the tradition from the Congo uh, history and mm. the, the mm. way they conduct the politics there. Mm. Mm. So don't be surprised that the, it be settled uh, uh, contrary to what the people believe. Mm. Also, uh, don't be surprised if there is an eruption, mm. but uh, likely uh, to be um, some, uh, how do you call it, earthquake, but no, no big deal will happen until the next uh, uh, three weeks. They'll be able to manage. But the people have always been asking, why isn't the Catholic Church saying who they think really won? Why? Why do you think they're not saying yet? <clears throat> First of all, it's, 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 it was a legal, there was a legal implication. Yeah. They could not say who, who is the winner yeah. because uh, that will be a criminal offense. Yeah. So I think they avoid it. Two, they, they have implied that it's not the, 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 the dauphin, the person that was... Uh, uh, fronted by Kabila. Yeah. That was the only thing that uh, was uh, uh, passed as a message. Right. Uh, Let's read this very quickly. Okay. Christopher Itaez, I always doubt on Africa indecency when superpowers still have right to challenge our political decisions. Their quick comments on DRC election result has worsened the post-election period. Africa should rise as one voice and say we are uh, fed up uh, with neocolonialism. I don't know if you agree with that or not. We have uh, one quick one right here at the House of Congo, uh, which says, yes, they want a recount to establish who won the election, but in the same communique, they encourage a government of nationality, which would be against the will 
of the people. And then uh, very quickly, finally, Rugundana says, I am concerned with the security and stability of citizens after election. It has become a habit that after announcing election results, citizens start to suffer due to opposing forces. Is this really fair? Why can't world theories be revised? It's a very important point that we want to end this conversation with. Of course, Electoral processes should never be part of the destabilizing factors in our nations. This particular narrative about Africa should actually end. It has to end with us. Of course, that's the time we had to speak about this particular issue. Let's keep talking on our social media platforms. Apologies sincerely over the technical hitches that we've had. Of course, to the panelists who were supposed to come here. I know you spared your time, but don't be able to be on the show. We apologize for that. We'll fix it. Thank you for being a part of the program. As always, my name is Eugene Andangwe. Good night.